Greetings, ladies and mendigants, and welcome to this latest episode of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Out space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. The links to all the stories will be down below, and as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider subscribing. Story number one A Rock, written by Hal S810. Give a human a rock, and they can use it as a weapon to defend themselves from danger and hunt for food. Give a human a pointy rock, and they can shape it into an arrowhead or a spear or an axe blade, and they can make a serious competitor for a top predator. Give a human a particular kind of rock, and they can make a fire and bring light to the darkness and warmth for the winter. Give a human the right kind of rock, and they can make tools and materials from which they can make more sophisticated tools and materials, whatever they need. Give a human a rock of a particular composition, and they can work out how to make it explode. Give a human a special type of rock, and with that right technique, they can teach it to think. Give a human radioactive rock, and, with the right know-how and engineering, they can refine it and turn it into an energy source, or become death. Destroyer of worlds. If you don't give them a rock, they will find one. End of story. Story number two. Human ship naming. Written by John Falkirk. It has come to the attention of the Council that Orion Confederacy Navy has been utilizing unusual ship names in order to gain advantage in the rapid hit-and-run raids that it has been employing against the Drusai Federation via manipulation of the standard galactic IFF system. We shall now endeavor to explain the situation and naming conventions, which have thus far proved problematic for the Drusai. First and foremost is the serendipity class of battlecruisers. The battlecruiser is a class of ship introduced by the Orion Confederacy. The first, of course, being a well-remembered OCS Ajax, named for an ancient mythological figure. The battlecruiser class is famed for the big guns and high speed. The general idea is a ship that can outrun anything if it can't outfight it, and outfight anything that it can't outrun. The most modern design of this classification, as any well-informed reader will know, is the Serendipity class, a series of five ships. In this class are the OCS, she's one of ours, sir, the OCS, that's a friendly captain, and the OCS, false alarm, scanner's acting up again. The OCS, never mind, just a speck of space dust on the scanner screen, and, of course, the infamous OCS, I fornicated with your maternal progenitor, captain. Their names, as you may have noted, are unusual, designed to cause confusion and command decks and hostile ships, which spot them and read their IF of signatures aloud, usually. Now, on to the Python class of light cruisers. And a story number two. Story number three. Humans are weird. Kitty classes. Written by Betty Adams. So, uh, anyway, Birth Ranger was explaining as he gestured to the broad expanse of skin that he had exposed along his abdomen. That was the day that we were doing our stop, drop, and roll drills. By the time it was my turn to roll, I'd completely forgotten about the bottle that I'd hidden, and I broke it from the fall. I sure remember that bottle fast when the glass broke, but I knew I shouldn't have had it under there, so I didn't cry or let the teachers know that it happened until the cut had bled through my shirt and the teachers saw. Fascinating, fourth cousin said. You genuinely did not consider massive laceration to your dermal surface a uh, problem. Not one worth getting in trouble for, fifth ranger said with a shrug. But, hey... I was just a kid. My brain wasn't firing on all cylinders, if you know what I mean. I am constantly amazed at how casual you mammals are about the damage to your outer membrane, Walt Cousin said, shaking her head as her antennae twitched. Our skin's designed to take a beating, First Ranger replied. It's not that big of a deal. Biological differences and all of that. So what is the stop, drop, and roll drill? Walt Cousin asked. Training on what to do if your clothes catch on fire, the fifth ranger said. It's about how to smother the flames. Fourth cousin's antenna curled up in horror as her frill dropped and pressed against her neck. 
for the ranger's lips quirked in a sign of amusement as he tilted his head to the side. Just out of curiosity, um, what about that horrified you, he said. Your training, she said slowly, her frill began to flutter in confusion, assumes that all small children will catch fire. Accidents do happen, he said with a shrug. Did you ever catch fire, she asked. Well, no, he replied, but I know what to do if I do. End of story number three. Story number four. Gork, the Savage Primitives, Human Edition, written by Dayamek. Welcome to the Gork on the Savage Primitive Show, where we take a being from a class zero civilization and bring them to our world. I am Flalella, and I'll be your host. The three-headed being waved his tentacles at the camera. We're switching a gear from the hunch slimes to the last episode. Today, we'll be interviewing a human. The audience clicked at appreciation as the curtains drew back, revealing the aforementioned human. It looked around and tugged on its helmet harness and covered most of its body. Hello, human! You've been given the incredible opportunity to meet an advanced civilizations. Are you excited? The host struck the microphone in front of the inferior species. The human blinked. I've been abducted by aliens, it said calmly. The human pulled again at the contraption containing it. What, um, is this translator or something? Yes, to both. Vlalela winked at the crowd who tooted. We're going to show you some scenes from our civilization, and we want your honest, unfettered opinion. Understand? All right. I've been needing a vacation, anyway. Its face scrunched up oddly as two workers wheeled in an enormous screen. The balcony device crackled, and the technicians began a sequence to power it up. Now, human, I want to warn you that what you're about to see isn't currently happening. It happened, but the moving images are simply a recording interrupted the human. Yeah, I know. It made a garbled noise and frowned. The translator beeped as it categorized the new word, and the human spoke again. That's a television, right? Even if it is a little big. Flilla clicked, low and slow. You know what it is. The host turned to the audience who made a shocked faces. Well, humans certainly are different from slimes. The Hefschner fell apart at the part of the show. He paused and everyone groaned, and started worshipping the television. Okay, then. Burying its blunt teeth, the human leaned back in its chair, or tried to, since the translator had restricted movement. Show me what you've got. The screen displayed a tall, amorphous building with streets of thousands of beings and cars. The hustle of a city light blared through the large speakers. We live here, said Falele. The two heads watched carefully at the human's reaction. All of us stacked on top of each other and these buildings. The human's face scrunched up again. That's nice. Indeed, Flalilla seemed rather disappointed by the human's lack of reaction. Here is something not so nice. The host waved his three tentacles and the screen changed. The virtual grainy being screamed as bullets tore through them, but the flash of thunder and bombs soon silenced them. The bloodiest battle in the Iriria Varia War, the host said, ducking his head. Thousands dead in a matter of minutes. I'm sure your world has nothing such like this carnage. The audience clicked in agreement as Brillina turned to face him. Ah, modern civilization can be so horrible. Communicating with a primitive civilization reminds us better of at times. It's tragic, the human agreed. War always is. It showed its teeth again, but in a different manner than before. Unfortunately, we're no strangers to war on that scale. How all of the flitter heads blinked. Really? Yeah. Guns, bombs, professional armies. We also have those. The human gestured to the vice. We have TV too, as well as skyscrapers, cars, and cities. The image flicked, and the technician kicked an enormous television. You do? The host waved its tentacle twice and the other technician brought forth a weird metal box. How about instantaneous communication? If you speak into this metal device, you can communicate with beings on the other side of the planet. Phones? Yeah, we got them. I have mine with me, actually. 
He opened a flap in his clothing and pulled out a tiny rectangular gadget. Valella and the audience clicked and groaned. You must be joking, human. That contraption is too small for any sort of communication. The host shook his head. No, I'm serious. He tapped the device and a light poured from the screen. Everyone, especially the technicians, made a high-pitched squeak. But it can do more than just call. The human used its digit to display the images of its own city and people. The buildings were rectangular instead of rounded, and the streets were filled with humans. But the scene looked remarkably similar to the one that had been shown on the television. The human tapped the image again, and the noise blared out and accompanied the video of the human city. It continued, My phone can play videos, take pictures, and even browse the... Uh... At this point, the human made a garbled noise. The translator beeped, and the human croaked again and frowned. I guess you don't have a word for it. A word for what? Managed for Lelele, though the host and everyone else were still entranced by the miraculous gadget. For a, um, system that allows computers to exchange information, I guess. He wiggled in his harness. The, the same barble is used for instantaneous access to pretty much anything. Music, videos, games. You can even call other people or, um, a different gurgle. Them. The visible difficulty. Valella waved several tentacles. We must have made a mistake. Humans can't be a class zero civilization. Either they were classified wrong, or we read it incorrectly. How do you classify civilizations? asked the human. Well, a class zero civilization has no presence outside their home planet. Class 1 civilization colonizes inside their own solar system, and Class 2 civilizations have colonies outside of it. Class 3 civilizations have faster than light travel. But Lelele clicked once, but with your technology, your species must be in Class 2 at the very least. The human made a strange wheezing noise and rubbed his head. Actually, your classification isn't wrong. We don't have any real presence outside of our planet. But Lelele waited and shocked cacophony of clicks to die. That certainly is unexpected. How did that happen? How did your people invent such astonishing creations while having minimal spaceflight? The human squirmed again. Uh, we, um, I, uh, I guess we had other priorities. Valeria's three sets of eyes focused on the human. Your species had priorities beyond space travel. The human made a wheezing noise again and held his device. Yeah, I guess. See? Two of the host's eyes blinked. I do see. We were going to erase your memory before sending you back to your planet. The host's three heads eyed the human phone. However, I'm sure that we can come to an agreement. The human revealed his teeth again. I'm sure we can. And thus, humans remain one of the few species to jump from class zero to class three. However, humans seem to be much more prouder of their other, more unique achievement. They remain the only species whose first contact happened as a result of reality television show. End of chapter. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you did, please consider subscribing. If you wish to support the author, there is a link to the original story, so pop over there and give him your support. If you wish to support this channel, however, there are a few ways to do so. The best and easiest would be to share this video with other people, as well as liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment. All of these things tell the algorithm that this channel is at least vaguely interesting and that may share it with other people. If you wish to support the channel in some other manner, watching my other videos would also help tremendously. Or if you really, really, really like, there is a link down below to leave a tip or to join the Patreon. Any and all support as very much appreciated. And I hope that you all have a good one until the next time. And I'll see you then. Cheers.